Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, two days ago, I never thought that I might be here today. <laughs> Packing my briefcase, I was sitting waiting for the visa, and nothing happened. You know, exactly on the day that I had the flight, no, the day before the, my flight, somebody called me from Belgium consulate office that uh, your visa is ready and we need a prepaid envelope to mail it to you because, you know, from Montreal to Vancouver, they should have mailed it. And how could I send them a prepaid envelope in a uh, uh, time uh, of uh, uh, 24 hours? Anyway, I'm here and I'm happy. And I'm happy that I'm here. Thank you, thank you everybody who made this possible. And thanks all the people who made the, this gathering possible, particularly Amin, whom I know uh, has, had, has worked round the clock. Uh, I'm going to talk about place. Uh, today it seems that everybody is talking about place. And it's social historical function in theater. My case studies are more historical rather than other cases because we want to cover uh, a more time in contemporary Iran's theater. Uh, to do this, first I should specify, specify what exactly I mean by place. Uh, and I want to say that don't take the terminology very serious. You know, the terminology is just for clarifying the concept because I want to make a difference between place and space. It could be vice versa. I could say space and place. Uh, in theatrical studies, there are two concepts of place. The first is the concept of place in the world of drama. Any word of drama, which is a possible word, has a place. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the life happens in places. Realization of any possible word, including the word of drama, depends on the main components of place, time, and person. And second is the place of theatrical performance, where the play is performed. Today, I'm going to fo focus on the second concept of place. I mean, not on the place in the dramatic world, but on the place, I mean, where the place is performed. That, in fact, is the place of performance. In our opinion, the place of theatrical performance is a significant layer in the very complicated network of the performance as a multi-layer text. Uh, in Arzada's uh, talk, we saw that how the place may change the whole event. Is it a parking, parking lot? Is it an official theatrical hall? Is it a square in the middle of the city? The, uh, is it a, an unofficial, marginal, or in-between space? So we see that the place of performance is a very important, significant layer of a multi-layered text, which is theatrical performance. Uh, I want to, um, to contrast the concept of place here with the concept of space. But as I said, the terminology is not that important. By space, we mean a physical entity. And I, I think you mentioned that physical entity. You mean, we mean a physical entity having dimensions. But by place, we mean the cultural and social aspects, the way place enters social challenges, and at the same time generates meaning and becomes part of the semiosphere. Thus, place and the space are not two mutually exclusive concepts, what are different aspects of one entity? A space is the physical aspect, and place is the cultural, social, and historical aspect of the same entity. It is evident that we are interested in studying place, because our objective in this study is to show 
uh, social and cultural functions of plays in theater. So uh, I'm going to mention some features of plays as defined now. The first feature is that plays is cultural. Uh, to expand our discussion, first let us talk about the cultural aspects of place. From a semiotic standpoint, culture is a complex of sign systems and codes formed through historicization and textualization of our lived experience in the world. Thus, any culture is the sphere of dynamics of intertextual relations, a network of sign systems, codes, and internalized texts, which in their coordinated functioning make creation and understanding new texts possible. The, having this uh, concept of culture in mind, and I intentionally gave this definition to differentiate it from those classical definitions that say that culture is highly valued behavior and ethics and so so. The cultural aspects of place as a sign, sign source has something to do with place as sign, place as a layer of a multi-layer text, and as a textual node in the network of intertextuality. So when we are here, it is not just the physics that, that is important. This place has a history, has some intertextual links through its uh, sculpture, its uh, architecture, its, its uh, uh, time of uh, construction, the events that has happened here, and uh, lots of other things. Uh, so uh, in this sense, place enters the re realm of culture through entering the process of semiosis and through finding connotative significations. The process of transformation of a null physical space to a culturally loaded place. A null physical space to a culturally loaded place. Here is a culturally loaded place. Uh, this transformation passes through the active reciprocal interaction of man and environment. You know, if to consider the environment a raw material, the interactive dynamic interaction of man and environment passes the raw material to the, uh, uh, to the culturally, loaded, uh, culturally loaded material. I'm not going to expand this concept more than this. We don't need it for now. Just I wanted to emphasize that by place, I mean a culturally loaded concept. The second issue that I'm going to uh, give as a feature of place is that place is social, not only cultural, but social. But I want to mention that these are not, as I said, mutually excluded because to be social means to be cultural, and to be cultural means to be social. But these are different aspects of our relation with place. When I talk about the cultural aspect of place, I talk about the meaning, gener generation, dynamicities of place. When I talk about the social aspect of place, I talk about what our actions in place and on place, in and on. Place is social because we act on and in place, and place acts on us. Never forget that this is not just, just we who act in and on place, but place also acts on us. When we are in this place, we may, uh, there may be some changes in our behavior, in our way of speaking, in our uh, even uh, costume, everything, you know? Place also acts on us. First, there is a reciprocal identification function, reciprocal identification function between man and place. You know, we say that we are from, for example, Iran. You are from Belgium. I take a photo in front of this building. I want to be identified with this building. And sometimes it is vice versa. The place is identified with the building. For example, we say that this is the house that Einstein 
took a photo in front of that. The house is being identified with Einstein. So there is a reciprocal identification function between man and place. In fact, to belong to somewhere, to be in somewhere, or attitude to somewhere, are willing to show that we belong to some special places, and not to the others, or generally, the meanings that place gives to different aspects of our lives, the role it plays in formation of different we's and different others in various discursive contexts makes place an active social participant. So place is not only cultural, but is, act is an active social participant. It means it participates in our social activities. Different media, including literature, cinema, theater, television, photography, etc., enjoy this semanticization function of place to create their possible worlds and to grant meaning to the characters, their actions, and their attitudes. To create a system of beliefs in, in, in place, uh, with or in opposition to the dominant ideology. You know, when we say that it is, it is social, at that moment, the issue of power and the issue of ideology comes to play their roles. When we say it is social. So, uh, it seems to be a reciprocal identification relation between man and place, by which I mean in some occasions we are identified by place and in some other occasions it is the place which is identified by man. Man gives meaning to the place and finds meaning in the place. Places are marked by some features like social class, wealth, political power, educational level, age, and even job. And this marking process is in fact an important part of the process of establishment of a we or self as opposed to an other. So you see that place plays a very significant ideological role in bestowing identity over us and defining the other of this self. Social groups and discourses, and discourses they represent, which may be in the position of power or counterpower, which I mean resistance to power, benefit from this function of place to symbolize their position. In critical disruptive moments of any society, in coup d'etats or, or in revolutions, in power struggles in different societies, we witness that in the same way, the same way that place are constructed to symbolize power and marginalize the other, they may also be destroyed in a violent act of abolishing the other and whatever may cause its remembrance. You know what I mean by this? Uh, there are, uh, in, some, in some societies, there are some, uh, some critical moments in the history of that societies, like a revolution or like a coup d'etat. Uh, my examples of uh, theatrical places uh, are from uh, the coup d'etat in Iran in 1953 and from the uh, revolution in 1978 to show you how these, uh, these uh, uh, social events have effect on uh, changing the meanings or functions of theatrical um, spaces. So in, 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 in such uh, situations, usually because the situation is very critical and spontaneous, uh, you know, they, there might be uh, different approaches, approaches to a place. Even some places might be destroyed. And you know, if place is just physics, it's just material, it's just building material, it's just a space, why should, be, why, should, why, why should it be destroyed? If it is destroyed, it shows that that, that place symbolizes an other which this newly come self doesn't like that other to still be remembered, in fact. Uh, destruction of a place is not only destruction of something physical, which seems to be nonsense, but also it is destruction of history, uh, collective memory, accumulated in place. Of course, 
The issue may be solved in rather softer way of transformation of place, functions, and identities. In such critical moments in the history of uh, any society, there might be two approaches. I will discuss both approaches. One is a violent, doing violent action against place, and the other is a softer approach, uh, which is transforming the place and transforming the way it is simplified to refer to a special group in power or something. In the latter, power tries to erase the cultural semiotic history of something, I mean in destruction, including a place, and to enter it in new semiosis processes. The physical entity in the softer approach is kept and the whole signification is transformed. It is in this social aspect that the issue of power, institutions, manipulation, and supervision should be discussed. How a place is built, it is organized, is organized, and is managed to manipulate the human relations and to supervise their activities and to naturalize the beliefs articulated in an ideology. This process of marginalization through place this process of marginalization through place organization may lead to marginalization of gender, race, social class, religion, etc. In fact, process of inclusion and exclusion, defining we and other, is one of the results of social functions of place. Now, to make that theoretical basis, uh, I mean, relation to uh, theatrical places in Iran. I have uh, studied three cases. Uh, all those three cases are uh, almost historical cases, but related to the contemporary history of Iran. And I want to show that the relation between a theatrical place, a performance place, and the power and changes of power, uh, how that relation has been and how it has changed. The picture that you see now is called uh, officially called Tekyeh uh, Dolat. And as you might know, Tekyeh in, in, in Shia uh, uh, Islam religion is a place in which passion plays are performed. Uh, plays, passion plays for uh, 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 Shia saints, uh, most important of them, Imam Hussein. This place is called Tekiyeh Dolat. As you may uh, notice, you may have noticed, the architecture of the place is uh, inspired by the architecture of opera, opera houses, European opera houses. Uh, the reason is why uh, Nasreddin Shah, which is a uh, uh, Qajar dynasty king who ruled almost 50 years during the 19th century in Iran, had some trips to Europe. I, I'm sure that he came to Belgium too. And he, uh, uh, he watched some operas in opera houses in, in Europe. And turning back to Iran, he had the dream of uh, building a, a construction like this for that opera house. So the first intention of such building was performing operas uh, similar to what happened in Europe. But we have now a manipulation of this idea. It seems that Shah is in the power, and whatever he likes he can do, but it is not the case. At the same time, the, the Shia clergymen having heard the news that Shah is going to uh, build such a building for opera, they interfered, interfered, they put pressure on Shah that it is not acceptable in our religion, and the, the transformation happened. I mean, the, the construction was not destructed or uh, destroyed or uh, ruined, but the, its function was changed from opera to passion play. But what happened to the same building then? Uh, the building was a tekye, a place for passion plays. The transformation happened and never ever any opera was performed in that building. But later on, at the end of Qajar period, when 
uh, when Reza, Reza, Reza Khan Pahlavi or the first king in Pahlavi dynasty came to power, he left the place unmaintained for two reasons. One, Reza Khan Pahlavi was not a religious man. He was against religion. And the place has some religious significations from uh, its previous cultural life. And the second, it belonged to the uh, last dynasty for which Reza Khan, I mean Reza Khan uh, uh, abolished that dynasty and came to power. It remembered the uh, power structure of Qajar dynasty, who was able to, you know, uh, uh, always uh, buildings symbolize the political power of states. And because of that, we have so many towers all over the world. The, the states wants to show that we have established, established political power. It was left, it was ruined, and then uh, there are some just uh, photos to show the, at the time that they were uh, plays were uh, performed there. And uh, finally, in, the, in that place, a bank was made. I call this process discontinuity in culture. You know? And discontinuity in culture uh, had most damages a culture bears is because of discontinuity culture. You know? Uh, the, there is no uh, trace of that building now, and you can see that uh, a branch of Bank Meldi Iran in the same lot of land. It was the first case. The first case, we had transformation and destruction. First, it was transformed from an opera house to a tekiyeh, and then it was totally uh, destructed. My second case, as you may see in the photo, uh, is a building called uh, Sadi Theater, or uh, uh, probably it is written in French, which is Theatre Sadi, I don't know French, um, Sadi Theater. And you know, uh, I, I know that because you are, most of you are not familiar with the uh, uh, contemporary history of Iran and the uh, cultural atmosphere, it might be a little difficult to get the idea, but this uh, hall, this theater, uh, was located in a, in a street which was called Lalezar. Lalezar means a uh, garden of flowers, something like this. During 1940 uh, to 1953, I mean the time of coup d'etat against, against uh, uh, the, uh, Mossadegh, the nationalist prime minister, this street was very vivid, dynamic, energetic place of uh, performing theaters, and uh, different political parties, which in that period were free, they, they, were, they were active, uh, had even their theatrical branch in this street. This is very interesting. And this uh, Saudi theater belonged to, uh, to the party, which was the pro-Soviet Communist Party of Iran. And Nushin, all of, peop all of uh, people who are interested in theater in Iran, know that Nushin, what, what Nushin has done uh, to, to Iranian theater, I mean, uh, the, the, the contributions of Nushin is, is not uh, neglectable. Uh, what happened to this building? and to that street. You know, this is part of a uh, uh, historical uh, cultural uh, resource. After coup d'etat, uh, this building was burned out in fire, totally. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any photo of the ruins of the building. The photo that you see is from the time of flourishing of theaters in that building. You know, people, even, even the way people are dressed uh, uh, show that uh, uh, energy that uh, has uh, been at work at that time in that place. 
But after a coup d'etat, the place was totally ruined and put in fire. You know, I, as a person interested in cultural, in cultural uh, studies, think that why should a place be, be put in fire? Except the fact that the power, the newly coming power after coup d'etat, wants to destroy all and any sign of the previous period. Any sign that may provoke the uh, collective memory of people from that period. And at the same time, the ruins of that theater building is itself a sign. Shows that you see what we will do with those people who perform such theaters in such places. So take the lessons, you know. In fact, it is a kind of punishment. Punishment of, of whom? Punishment of culture, punishment of cultural people, punishment of theater. They punish the theater through putting the building into fire. In, I, I mean, there is an aggressive act, uh, an act of violence against building. And this shows that place is cultural and place is social. If place is not cultural and was not social and was not political, why should they put fire on the building? And uh, I couldn't find the exact photos of the ruins of that, uh, that theater hall, but the photo shows some other theater halls in the same street uh, after coup d'etat that you see that they are almost closed, burned out, and things like this. And my last case, uh, is what is called City Theater, a very uh, elegant building, very, very beautiful, and uh, a building that uh, the architecture itself might be studied because of, uh, I, I think, it is the outcome of a cultural doctrine uh, that is a very uh, cohesive doctrine, and uh, 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 tries to you know, appropriate modern aspects of life for, uh, for the Iranian way of life. You know, this is a modern building, but you can see lots of, uh, lots of traces of uh, Iranian architecture and, uh, and uh, so on. But, yes, it is beautiful, it is good, and it is still working while some, some hall, you know, it is not just one hall, there are lots of hall in this, halls in this building, while some of them are, have some physical problems, constructive problems, but it is still working and it is the uh, heart of the, beating heart of uh, Iranian theater. But I want to say that the, the discourse uh, according which this building is made which this, this, was, this building was made during Pahlavi dynasty and was um, the, the ideas of uh, Farah Diba, which was the queen of that time. Uh, th these kind of buildings comes out of the doctrine of Farah Diba. Again, there is a sense of, a sense of centralization in that building, you know? How many, how many halls are there? Much, maybe maybe more, more than four or five. You know, this was the center of theater. Finished. Anybody wants to perform a theater should give permission to do that there. Anybody wants to watch a performance should go there. And this idea of centralizing theater in one building, which is very elegant, very beautiful, again, in my opinion, has something to do with the power and with the establishment of a centralized uh, power. We still are suffering from this centralization in Tehran. Because Tehran is a very, very big city. And if you want to come from the end west, for example, to this place, you should have at least two hours in traffic and those things. That city needs at, needs at least 10 of these uh, buildings. The idea of centralization, the idea of glory, of making beautiful and making you know, huge, huge building, I believe has something to do with power. But what happened then? 
it was a building related to Pahlavi. I want to study the next uh, critical point in Iranian history, the revolution in 1978. Okay? It was, it was natural that many things belonging to Pahlavi dynasty and uh, symbolizing that dynasty um, in a revolution, any place in the world, might be ruined or might be totally changed. In, I mean, its function might be totally changed. What happened to this building and this one? This one also was made during Pahlavi dynasty, a very, very uh, beautiful, big, huge hall uh, proper for opera. I have some photos from inside. You see the inside. Very high standards of uh, building such a, such a cons constructing such a building. Uh, what happened to these buildings? Well, of course, they, they were not buildings. They, they, they should be stupid to destroy such buildings. But at the same time, they bring to the mind of people, to the collective memory, uh, the glories of another dynasty. This time, what happened? Uh, uh, in contrast to what happened to Saudi theater in that act of violence, it was totally destroyed and put in fire. These places were kept out of use. I think for two, three, four years, two, three years. You know, there were no theaters after the revolution who wants theater <laughs> in, in, in that sense of uh, revolution. There were no, no performances and the, the buildings were locked. Then after two, three years, when the new ideology, the new state, the new the, the discourses were established, then they opened the halls again and they started to, um, to own them, you know, to, to make them, to, to appropriate them to their ends and to their uh, particular uh, discursive concerns. The interesting thing is that, I mean, the relation between language and place. In Persian writing system, it has written talar vahdat, means, which means vahdat hall, for example, vahdat theater, vahdat hall. The name at the time of Pahlavi was Talar Rudaki. This change of name, change of names happen in revolutions. In, in, in one of my friends from uh, Russia was discussing that after October Revolution in 1917, many, many, many names were changed because you know, a language is not just a tool for communication. Language is the carrier of ideologies. Language is the builder of mm, collective memories and these things. When you change the name, in fact, you give new identity, a new state gives, after revolution, gives new identity to the place. But with some interesting conclusion, I want to end this talk. And that conclusion is that even when after three, four years, these places were opened again and they started activity, but in the light of new discourses of the revolutionary state, the uh, hierarchical, uh, I mean, structure of the buildings, which is very closely related to the concept of power, no matter whose power, you know, the concept of power was the same. Again, this hall, which at the time of Pahlavi was very official, Nobody can go and buy a ticket and go inside. You know, special costume, ties, um, black costumes, I don't know. I've never gone there at the time of Pahlavi, you know. I couldn't go. Again, I, I, I don't want to say that after the revolution, again, that formalities were kept. But in the relation with the state, again, it is that this place is the place of performances that usually are directly funded, supported, and supervised, and ordered by the state. You know? And the hierarchy, again, goes down. At that time, the places, the theatrical places, Tehran theatrical places, have the same hierarchy. You know? I mean, the approach of power to the place and the hierarchy didn't change, but the content of 
plays which were performed, of course, was changed from Pahlavi to the Islamic State. Thank you for your patience. Thank you very much. And then now again we have several minutes for your questions. Oh. Please don't ask difficult questions. <laughs> I, I'm trying. Uh, thank you, first of all. And um, um, the, we talk about power that is uh, from the state or that is very high. And we talk about the people who come inside. Um, coming from Berlin and uh, in Europe, the big theater houses have uh, also gained their identity through the people who run them. Yeah. So the, the bosses of the theater or the dramaturgs or the people who direct there, and they also gain then a certain color in what, what kind of subjects they cover and so on. If they're experimental, if they're adventurous or not. Does this exist at all? The, the influence of the people who run the theaters? Yes. And how does it change? Uh, no when? doubt, this is not, uh, any, uh, I mean, uh, the theory I gave is not a theory for Iran. It is a universal theory. Any place in the world, uh, this, I mean, reciprocal identification function is not something just for Iran, you know. Uh, different groups of people, different social groups, different classes, different attitudes and trends identify themselves with different places. And it happens any, in, in any place in the world, you know. Uh, maybe the uh, intensity of supervision is a little different. <laughs> um, but you know, uh, I should add this. Okay. Uh, remember also this uh, talk. The, the issue is that, for example, uh, let us talk about something called um, street theater. What is the spirit of street theater? Suddenly happening in a part of city, not announced, and people gather, and usually on social issues. Okay, I mean the intensity of supervision is different. We have a street theater in Iran, but not in that sense. The street performances have gone to the framework of a festival each year. They are before, before performance, they are supervised. The places of performance is determined. It is announced. And in two days, in different places in the city, they go and play, you know? It is totally against the spirit of uh, the street theater. Thank you. As I can see, there is uh, no more questions right now, but uh, if you have any more questions, you can ask uh, at the end of the program. So, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.